Hello. So, um, oh, let me actually adjust that. So, coming back to this, uh, I took a wake off because not a lot was really changing, so I didn't want to be too monotonous. But there's quite a few changes this time. Uh, Drago moved out. Unfortunately, he asked, and I already have two other lazy types, so I was like, ah, sorry, bud. I'll miss you. I, I will miss him. He was one of the ones I got from the islands. Um, him and Lucky. In fact, Lucky I got from the first Nook Island I ever visited. So, yeah, I'll hang on to him. Um, that being said, I'm going to spend a lot of this stream just going to islands to try and find somebody to replace Drago. Um, unless someone's already moving in, which I haven't checked yet. So, let's find that out. And start it up! Ugh, I'm having a rough day as far as video production goes. I actually filmed a, um, I started filming a new movie review. I'm going to catch up on all the movies I've watched since, uh, my last review, including ones that are not necessarily current, but, uh, I started filming it with an micro SD card in an SD card adapter in my new nice camera, and, uh, it corrupted like 10 minutes into it so yeah I, I ordered an actual SD card that'll be able to hold things and a micro HDMI so that I'll be able to uh, connect it to here and have like an actual nice video for my um, for my streams so that should be fun in the meantime we're gonna just be doing this uh, this is gonna be pretty relaxed you know not doing a uh, not doing a ton. I've been keeping up with it, you know. Um, I had a rough few days. I don't know. I, I just didn't feel motivated to do it. I'm I'm also currently like trying to fix my sleep schedule, which the only way I've found that works consistently for fixing my sleep schedule. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to grab my stuff after I got turnips yesterday. Um, is to stay up, like. 20, 24 hours, and then, um, once, uh, yeah, uh, when I, when I do that, um, I, I then I'll just let myself sleep for as long as possible, you know, no alarm, and then, um, once I, uh, why did I get two slingshots? Once I've done that, anytime I do this, I always accidentally grab a duplicate. Um, I also need to grab the Nook Miles tickets that I have. Um, but yeah, I... I, I just do that, and so, like, first day, yeah, I only do it when I'm waking up, like, into the evening, in the a into the afternoon, so I'll wake up, like, two or three, then stay up till, like, noon the next day, and then I will be exhausted, and then I will, uh... Oh, I need to go get more bells, actually. Um, and then I will sleep as long as my body will go. And then, uh, the next, the, uh, next day, I'll usually be getting up at, like, 10 p.m. or to midnight. And then I stay up until, like, a decent time, like, 8 to 10 o'clock, uh, and sleep in, and then, then I'm usually good. I'll be able to get up at 7 for like a few weeks until I start drifting. And just do it all over again. So that is just pretty much how my life goes. It's tricky. It's tricky. I mean, a lot of people are experiencing this now that they don't have like a specific schedule. They also are having troubles, but uh... Yeah, I just, I, I've always had, like, sleep troubles like that, but then, especially working just for myself, um, as I have been of late, 
Uh, it's really hard to just stay on top of it because there's not really a huge incentive when you're just when you're just having to meet deadlines for clients and such. Like, why not get up later? It doesn't really matter. Oh, uh, something to point out. Um, I found out that three of my residents have birthdays in the last half of May. So Peggy's was uh, just on Saturday. Leonardo's was like the Friday the week before. And now Marcy's is coming up on Sunday. Oh, sold. Okay, maybe I won't need to do Nook Mile Island at all. Blanche. What does Blanche look like? Let me look up Blanche. See who I'm getting. Unlike a lot of Animal Crossing people that I see, because any time, every now and then we'll watch like compilations on YouTube of just like Animal Crossing TikToks, and some of them are cute. It's like, oh, they made a figure. Oh, they're making a quilt. And some people are just happy to be like with their villagers, but some people are so negative and just absolutely despise their villagers. And it's really, really sad. Cause like, even the ugly villagers are still really cute in their own way. I, I just, it makes me feel really bad. Cause I, um, they're just like so mean. Why you gotta be so mean? Okay. Blanche is a snooty ostrich. Hmm. I'll make two birds. I was hoping to, like, go out and find a cat villager. Um. But I guess I don't need to. Since, uh, fate has decided that I will have this ostrich. I, Drago moved out on, like, Saturday anyways. So I guess I just, I waited a little too long hoping I could do it on stream. Oops. Mubba. That's alright, I'll still do the same thing. Oh, let me bring the chat back up. So that I can see if any of y'all say anything. Which, feel free to at any time. Especially, I would appreciate it if I'm, if I'm doing something wrong. Like, say, the audio or video or screwing up or something. I would like to know about it. So, feel free to let me know. I will not be will not be offended if it turns out I'm doing something dumb. Uh, let's put the wand there because at this point I don't even really need the pole or ladder. Um, I have ramps and uh, bridges everywhere that I want them to be, so. I can just live, bro. I can just live. Peggy. Talk to me, girl. Uh, apparently they're... At least they say that they're crafting recipes for turnips. Um, I don't know how you'd get them, but I don't know. Maybe it's just rumor. I have not officially seen anything, so could be just somebody messing with me. Um. I'm just taking advantage of the fact that so many people are in the, the town square. Bird on the shore? Oh, that's Gulliver! Hold on. Hey. Phoebe. Sup? I feel you, Phoebe. <laughs> Trying to stay up till at least after dinner. Because, uh. I'm gonna have a really good dinner. Making some, uh. 
some Indian food, some tikka masala. I always want to make it more often, but um... Man, some of the ingredients are expensive. I do really enjoy it. It just sucks. There's no, like, Indian food place in town. We have, like, some Japanese food. We have a Thai food place, which... Thai, f Thai curry is starting to grow on me. I, I never liked it as a kid. Um... I, I never liked it as a kid. Uh, yellow curry, kinda. Um, and now, as an adult... Uh, same with Indian food. I really despised both of those as a kid. Now, as an adult, I, do, I really like Indian food. And I can tolerate... Um, Thai food. I just... The Thai curry... It's weird, because it's, like, savory and sweet. Like, it's got a weird... I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fan of coconut milk, I guess, is what it really comes down to. It, similar, there's some things I feel that, like, they're a little overhyped. Uh, people seem to be really into coconut milk and coconut water, which I'm not really a fan of either. Um, the other thing is jackfruit as a uh, as a substitution for meat like especially it's used as like pulled pork or like chicken and I gotta say I don't I I don't care for I mean I don't have a problem with it it tastes fine it's not like it it's not like I don't like the jackfruit it's just as a substitution uh, it's not neutral enough is the problem. You either need something that tastes like very umami, like mushrooms, so that it will be kind of meaty. Crap. Miss the fish. Um, or... Excuse me. You need something neutral so that the other flavors will, uh... take hold. And jackfruit doesn't really do either of those things. Uh, oh, actually, I don't think I have one of these. Who's this? Got it. What is this? Oh! Yeah, I didn't have one of those. Right? Yeah, that's new. Sweet. Get a creep out blathers. My favorite part of this game. It was a great, uh, <laughs> it was a great little clip I saw that was, uh, somebody had put a huge ring of tarantulas around the entrance to the museum, and then they wrote in the, the, the text chat, Come out, Blathers, I have a surprise for you! <laughs> so rude. Ah. I, um, I do appreciate it, though. I, I also enjoy bullying the nerd. The heckin' dork. This is a pretty big fish. Probably see that. Yeah. I... I think the joke there... The... more like a C plus. Is that a... Is that a uh, programming joke? I think that would only work if it was C-Base, though? Um... I think... I think I might have plateaued with these. I should... Uh, I mean, it went up by like 500 points. I gotta do something. I gotta do something to, like, drastically fix up my stuff. Hmm. Only 104 le- What is he talking about? Is there, like, a joke here I'm missing? Hmm. I don't know. Lucky's kind of an idiot, but I love him. Um... That makes me think of, uh, there's a book, I haven't read it, I've been meaning to forever, there's a book called Elo Minope, 
which is a, um, it's a novel about, uh, the fictional town where the, the phrase, uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog was invented. So, uh, for the very, if there's anyone out there who doesn't know, that is one of many phrases, um, a handful of phrases in the English language that contains every single letter of the alphabet, um, just once. But, uh, um, yeah, so in the book, it's the town where that was discovered or invented or wh whatever you'd say. And they have, like, a statue of the guy who did it in the town square with the, um, with, like, a sign that has all the letters. And then it has the whole phrase. And then one of the letters falls off of the sign or it gets stolen or something. It's, it's gone. And so from that point onwards, the book stops using that letter. So it continues the story, but the letter that is missing is now not used in any any of the words. Um, and... Yeah, uh, then more letters start going, and as they do it, they continue to... They, they continue removing them from any further part of the book. And it gets down to, like, a handful of letters. That's all I know about it. That's pretty much just the premise, but, um... I'm really, I'm really curious. I really like stuff like that. There's another uh, book called A Void. Like, A Void. Um... And that one is a book... It's a book with strong themes about something missing that does not use the letter E anywhere in the book. Um, which, I mean, E being the most common letter in English, it's uh, pretty impressive. There's another... Uh, there's a, a rap song by Watsky and, uh, Zach Sherwin called, uh, No E, which does the same thing. I mean, it's just a song, so it's not, it's not quite as, uh, large of an undertaking, but it's still pretty impressive because it's very wordy. And they never feel like they're, like, stilting the language. Like, sometimes it's like, okay, there's a little bit of poetry to the the wording, so it sounds a little weird. But, um... The, uh... Um... For the most part, it's, like a pretty solid, like, song. To the point where when I first listened to it, uh, Coco just put it on without telling me what it was first. And I didn't realize until, like, two minutes in that that's what they were doing. And a great thing that they do at one point is they start, like, um, like, you, it, it's easier to tell in the video because they, like, show the words visually. Um... But, uh, the... What are you up to? Oh, thanks, I guess. Mm. Um, but, uh... But the... Uh, I'll keep talking to you. Um, but, uh... Yeah, towards the end of the song, they, they start specifically, like, doing setups four words that contained E's, and then changing them, then like, like specifically those words, and then they change it so that the, um, they change it so that the, the line still works, but using the word, uh, without the E, so it's words that 
um, words that are the same as another word, just without the, uh, with, uh, just an E separating them. It's hard to describe. Go listen to No E by Watsky and, uh, I think it was MC Mr. Napkins at the time, but Zach Sherwin is the guy. Really, just anything by those two separately. They've, I think that's the only collab they've done together. They've done stuff together for uh, Epic Rap Battles of History, which is another really fun, um, uh, really fun channel. But yeah, anything by Watsky. Watsky does like pure art. Like he. I feel like people uh, in the internet age mostly know him for ERB, but like, he's like a really, he's been around, like he's pretty prolific. He was on like Deaf Poetry Jam back in the day, so like, he knows what he's doing. And then, uh, Zach Sherwin, I mean, he does a lot of the best writing for ERB. And he just, he is immensely clever with his lyrics, which I, I greatly appreciate. Like, that's generally what I'm looking for when I listen to any kind of rap. Um, and there are other rappers like that. Uh, oh, who was it? There's one I really like, but I can't remember his name right now. I haven't listened to him in a while. Um, if you look up uh, Burfi, B-U-R-F-I, that's one of his songs. That should that should get you to him. Um, but yeah, him, uh, Atlas is pretty fun. Forty-seven bells. That's not very good. I I I I enjoy these people. If I if I didn't have to worry about getting copyright claimed on my YouTube archive again, I would play some Spotify of these guys, but uh unfortunately, yeah, the one time I did that I got two copyright claims, which are automated, so it's just like content ID and yeah, it's 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 dumb. It's not like a copyright strike, so my channel isn't super affected. But like that archive channel, if I ever get that archive channel, uh, um, big enough to monetize then I won't be able to monetize that one. But at the same time, I'm nowhere near big enough to uh, get monetized on YouTube yet. Which sucks. The The barrier to entry used to be like a lot more achievable. And on the other hand, it's like, it's not that hard by my understanding. And it's, it's important because like, people are pretty scummy when it comes to the bots and stuff, so like, we did need to have some kind of safeguard in place to stop that nonsense. Just sucks that it came at the expense of uh, everybody making content. I'm just frustrated with YouTube in general. They're, they're consistently doing stuff that makes it more and more difficult for their content creators. Um, which is... Oh, crap, do I already have this song? Um, I guess so. Which, that's frustrating, and then also, like... Uh, no, that's, that's pretty much it. It's just frustrating. They keep making it harder and harder to use their platform and be able to, like be incentivized to even continue using it like there feels it feels like there's very little reason to continue using it other than the fact that they're they have a monopoly really on the on a 
video streaming, like, um, independently controlled video streaming, that is. Like, yeah, there's daily motion, I guess. It's like, nobody uses daily motion. If you want to get any kind of an audience, you, but YouTube is pretty much the only game in town. And it just, in just a few short years, starting in about 2016, it just all went downhill so fast. So fast. Like, starting in 2016, it just, it just dissolved. It was at one point something that was, like, actually acceptable, and the main problems were, like, um... Like MCNs, multi-creator networks, where that was just third parties exploiting uh, YouTube creators. But now it's like YouTube itself is basically exploiting people because they're running ads and getting money on videos that people themselves cannot earn any money from. So like they're basically just using other people's hard work. And let me tell you... Even the most basic video, like my movie reviews, you can go watch them. Like, they're very simple, very low effort. Like, I just record video of myself talking and then do pretty, pretty simple editing to uh, make it acceptable. But like, that still takes like two, three hours of work. That's all work that I'm just doing for free. And that, that sucks. That really sucks. It also sucks that, like, in the future, if I, even if I get monetized, like, they can uh, create some all kind of nonsense to stop it. Like, if I post any of these Animal Crossing videos, it could get false flagged for being for kids because it's, because it's a cutesy video game. And that would mean that not only, not only would I not be able to monetize it, but also I would be liable for up to, uh, that's the, okay. There's a lot to be said about COPPA, but effectively the COPPA restrictions on YouTube are basically YouTube by making the, the little switch, the little toggle where you have to say, whether or not a video is made for kids um, is so that they have no liability if it's found to be made for kids and uh, is monetized. So if you miss, if you do not intend something for kids, but it mostly gets watched by kids and becomes COPPA non-compliant, and if it's not running ads... That's not a problem. But if YouTube is running ads on it, then you, the channel owner, not YouTube, who are the ones who are responsible, you, the channel owner, will be liable for $40,000 plus in fines. That's what it is. They're covering their own ass by doing that. It's... It's infuriating. It's really infuriating. And it's screwing over people who are just kid content adjacent. Like the doll customization channels. Where they're using... They're doing like hardcore craft work. That involves like industrial solvents. Uh, sewing machines. Soldering irons. Like they're... They, this is not... Clearly not kid stuff. But because it's toys, technically... They they get labeled as for kids, and it's like, what are you supposed to do? It's clearly not a child safe activity. So what do you? I don't. I'm frustrated. That's all. That's all it comes down to. It's really frustrating to be someone creative trying to make a living, because no one believes that you. No one. No one with the significant amount of money need it like no one who can afford to pay you a decent living wants to believe that it's an actual real like it's actual work 
It's an actual skill. They want to believe that you're just playing around, screwing around, having fun. When in reality, it's like... Anytime you work for money, it becomes so much less enjoyable. No matter how much you enjoy something. Any activity. And... Uh, you, uh, like, regardless... It's work. Like, even the most pleasant work is still work. When I do voiceover stuff, like... It can be hours of work. Just because it's, like, the actual, like, recording and stuff is fun. Like, when you uh, when you record and you're acting and stuff, that part's fun. But then there's uh, way more time spent on editing and uh, editing, processing, mixing, mastering. Most of the work is in just, like, client acquisition and marketing, which is frustrating because that part sucks. I hate it. Marketing is stupid and dumb. Stupid and dumb and scummy, and it makes you feel gross. Okay, I guess that's just gone now. Gotta find the communicator parts. Are they around here? Are they around there? Alright, I guess I'll go to the next chunk of beach. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's irritating. And, like, uh, my YouTube content, like, I, I'll admit the movie reviews are a little low effort. There's still work, but, like, they're not that much work. But then, like, uh, uh, whiteboard games, like, that series is so much work. Like, I'm working on it right now. You can actually see over here. I'm hard at work, like, writing the next season. Um, so, like, it, it is, like, dozens of hours of work in editing, in, in writing, filming, recording the voiceover, editing. All of it. It's so much work. And it's work I enjoy for the most part. But it's still exhausting. I'm not making any money or anything off of it. So, like, it can be pretty disheartening that I have to take time away from my career that already isn't, like, super, like, well-paying to work on this other project. In a perfect world, we would be, we would receive payment for any and all work that we did. But unfortunately, people, people aren't, are sometimes not even willing to pay for the work you did for them. So, I don't, I don't know. My, and then, like, my only real, like, recourse... Rather, my only, like, other course of action, other than hoping for, like, YouTube stuff, is, like, merchandise, which that's, like, costs that has to be put into it, and, um, uh, donations through something like Patreon or coffee, and, like, that's just going through a third party, which I, I don't really like doing. I'd prefer to be independent of these systems rather than having to pay fees to middlemen for doing very little. Like, they're, they're doing a little bit of admin work. So, f for what they do, I guess the fees aren't that bad, but it's like... I would greatly like to just be able to, uh... make all of my own money. And not have to give it give it away to, like, have it. <laughs> because right now, every, every place that I earn money takes a cut. Whether it's straight through PayPal or whatever, like, freelancing site. I lose some amount of money every time I work. That, that, that is frust... Rating. 
But you know what? I'm getting really down. This is a lot of ranting about, like, negative stuff. But, you know what? I'm just relaxing. I'm playing some Animal Crossing. I'm trying to stay awake. I have an energy drink in the other room that I'm gonna have, so... I'll have that after this, because I know I'm gonna talk for a while, and that, uh... An energy drink will, uh, dry out my voice. Some vocal tips. Always stay hydrated, which just generally you should always stay hydrated. Um, which is a combination of consuming water through uh, the water content in food. Whoop, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Oh, um, and, or drink, just drinking water. Uh, avoid, and then avoid pretty much any drink that isn't water. Anything with sugar, sugar is going to dry your vocal cords out. Oh yeah, uh, that's another thing I forgot to point out. I moved everybody's houses over out here so that uh, I can move Mabel or the Abel sister. No, I'm gonna keep Abel sisters where it is. It's a nice spot, but uh, yeah, I got them all out here and then I'm gonna move my house Ooh, somewhere nearby, I think. Somewhere convenient. This is, whose house is this? Marcy. Gotta talk to Marcy. Um, so, yeah, sugar will dry your throat out, so uh, don't don't really do that too much. Um, carbonation is very rough on your throat. Like, any... Um, oh, thank you, Marcy. Uh... And any carbonation will basically scratch your throat, and it's usually not too much that you'll notice. But if you're gonna do like voiceover, it uh, it'll it'll, it'll be noticeable. So avoid those things. Alcohol, alcohol does the double thing of uh, um, drying your throat out, and uh, making you feel less sensitive. Just in general, but like especially to what's happening with your throat, so it can be kind of dangerous. Um, caffeine, caffeine can be bad because uh, it it makes it more difficult to control your muscles, and it can cause your muscles to uh, uh, spasm, which includes your vocal muscles. So it can be harder to control what you're doing with your voice. So it's tricky. Um, Milk and other dairy products can uh, give you mouth noise. So either having a dry mouth or having like a very phlegmy mouth from like dairy products or whatever can be uh, can be a little unpleasant. Lozenges as well. Uh, lozenges can be. Uh, problematic because a lot of lozenges are effectively just candy with like a tiny bit of medicinal content so be sure that you're getting good lozenges um i use fisherman's friends these taste like death because they are like pure menthol and uh eucalyptus so they just they just hurt they're so strong but you pretty much only need one, and they 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 they'll do you. They'll get you good. Um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is that a lot of them have a uh, numbing agents, so you got to be careful. Oh yeah, let me uh take this. A lot of them have numbing agents, so you got to be careful that you don't uh, just numb your throat. And then, uh, do something strenuous and not realize that you're hurting yourself because you can't feel it. So, that's something to keep in mind. Good things for your throat. Uh, conversely to sugar, honey. Honey is like the best cough syrup you can have. It is, uh, it is anti-bacterial. Uh, so, it can help with like laryngitis kind of stuff. And 
it's very soothing and it, it it's thick so it coats your throat um, and doesn't just drizzle away right away and um, tea specifically echinacea tea which is usually called throat coat um, it does take like taste like licorice so if you don't like licorice like me you might not like it um, that's an herbal tea but another good one and I'd say even better is uh, any black tea, like an, an Earl Grey, an Irish breakfast, English breakfast, whatever. Um, Assam, which is usually in a Irish breakfast tea. That's that's usually my go-to. Um, they are caffeinated, so it can be a little troublesome. It's more, it's a recovery drink more than it is like a warm-up drink. For warm-up, just like a little bit of warm water with some honey and maybe some lemon to deal with like mouth noise. That's pretty uh that that's pretty good for warming up. But then for recovery, uh black tea. <sighs> yeah, probably not enough sleep. <laughs> um black tea over brewed, so it'll be very strong. Um is great for inflammation. Black tea is so good for inflammation that if you brew strong black tea and let it cool down, uh, you can actually use it to treat sunburns. So if you have a sore throat or anything like black tea with some honey and some uh, milk, um, the, the, the thing is like, milk, again, it's not good if you're gonna record soon, but like, if you're recovering, Again, like the honey, it can like coat your throat and hydrate it, so it can be good for that. Um, so those are a few things, a few things to keep in mind. Excuse me. Yeah, as I said, I'm quite tired. But you know what? When ain't we? As adults, you know, being an adult is just being tired. I'm chill, I'm relaxed. I do not want to fall asleep because uh, it is actually against Twitch's terms of service to fall asleep on stream. Um, well, fun fun fact for you. It is for our own safety though, because for a long time people were. Uh, uh, having pretty unhealthy streaming habits where they would stream so long because like once you get affiliate and stuff like the longer you stream the higher the chance that you'll get subscribers the higher chance you'll get money so it's in your best interest to stream as much as possible but if you're falling if you're like streaming yourself so hard that you are passing out on stream like that's just not healthy and it kind of came to a head um, when there was a, a certain uh, there was a streamer I don't remember who it was but they fell asleep on stream and uh, because they were the only one there um, people started like advertising it like hey this guy's just asleep and so like he fell asleep with like a small audience and woke up with like a ton of people putting bets on like when he would wake up <laughs> and that's that's funny and like they they have like um they have an emote now i'm pretty sure of that guy sleeping which is a little hypocritical if they're gonna like if they're gonna discourage it with their terms of service but then encourage it in their uh, branding. I, I feel like that's really mixed messages. Um, which they uh, had this discussion on, I think, like, Game Grumps or something. So, like, a lot of what I'm saying is just repeating what they said. I have no opinions of my own. I'm just an amalgamation of all of the things that I absorb. 
Whoops. But aren't we all? Really? You think about it. That's why it's so important to, like... Like, be careful about the media that you consume. Because it really does shape you as a person. Like, you might not realize it, but in subtle ways. Like, it, it really does affect you and your personality. Um, the thing is, though, like, I've, I've found that, like, different people consuming different media will uh, affect me in more positive or negative ways. Uh, one of the most positive ones I've found is when I'm, uh, every now and then, I'll listen to a lot of my brother, my brother and me. Like, especially, I'll fall asleep to it. Because, uh, there's, like, hundreds of episodes, so I'll just pick, like, a random episode and just let it go while I'm falling asleep. And, like, listening to that, the, like, the, the style of, like, comedy that they have, it just really heightens my sense of humor. Like, I don't start quoting them. Like, if I, if I listen to a lot of comedy Bang Bang, I end up just kind of quoting that. Which isn't... Which isn't, like, the worst thing, because it is pretty funny, and few enough people listen to it that they'll find it tired hearing that same joke. Um, not that I wouldn't credit them. Generally, I will say the joke and then be like, okay, that's I heard it on here. Like, I'm not going to just act like it's my joke when it's not, but, uh... But when I listen to My Brother, My Brother and Me, or Mbim Bam, as it's called, uh... I think I already said that. I end up not... Um, I end up, like... Like, making a lot more jokes in my day-to-day, -day, but, like, a lot of them, while in the kind of style of the McElroys, are never, like, direct jokes from that they've done. So it just kind of, like, heightens my ability to recognize opportunities for comedy, I guess? It's hard to describe. Um... But I, feel, I I like it. It's worth it. And I definitely suggest listening to that. I know... I heard... I, I've recommended it to a few people, and one of the things I hear kind of often is that people literally can't listen to it because they find their voices so uh, abrasive. Which is interesting. Um, I, I, have, I don't have that effect. I do... It's so bizarre that... Um, I have trouble telling uh, two of them apart. Basically, it's three brothers, uh, Griffin, Justin, and Travis McElroy. And um, Griffin sounds different than the others. And he's kind of the golden child. Like, he's clearly the most funny and talented. But does not, like... That's the thing is, like, that's saying a lot because the other two are also so funny that it's, like, he, his bar is just transcendent. The bar among the whole family is so high. Um, but, yeah, the, uh, uh, Travis and Justin, the two older brothers... They sound so similar, and I've listened to dozens and dozens of hours of these guys at this point. Like, probably close to 100 hours, honestly, like, over all of their podcasts. Because I've listened to that, I've listened to The Adventure Zone, which is their, like, uh, tabletop RPG podcast, mostly D&D. But they did a Monster of the Week for Amnesty, which I would say is their best season, I would definitely suggest um, if you get into them to listen to Amnesty. It's it's very very good. Um, but the um, and they also have till till death do us blart, which is a uh, a uh, uh, like mini series they did where. Or it's a mini series they continue to do, uh, where it's going to last eternally. Where every American Thanksgiving they watch Paul Blart Mall Cop Two, and then discuss it. And they have named their successors. 
for who will take over when they die. And this will go on for eternity. It, it, they, they, the podcast will continue well after their deaths for generations to come. Um, which is going to get real awkward <laughs> when the first of them start dying. Um, but, uh, yeah, one of them pointed out, it's like when they, they told one of the, their successors that they were them, they, that person immediately started taking a much larger interest in their health to make sure they live as long as possible before their, uh, their eventual passing of the torch, passing of the blart to the next... Uh, what's cool is they did a little mini series for the quarantine that we're going through where they watched Paul Blart Mall Cop 1 for the first time. Travis had watched it once just to like, just to change things up because they've been doing it like five years now. Um, and they're doing it with, uh, uh, Guy Montgomery and Tim Bat of, uh, of uh, the worst idea of all time, which is a podcast where they, which is a podcast where they they watched uh, the move the Adam Sandler's move the Adam Sandler movie, uh, Grown Ups Two, once a week for a year, and then after they finished that one. They watched uh, Sex in the City 2 once a week for a year and just record a podcast each time and just had a dang old time. It's a, it's a very interesting podcast. I would definitely recommend it. Audio quality is a little amateur, but you know what? It's, it's very... Uh, entertaining i have not listened through all of it yet i've tried a few times i i'm a little more than halfway through it's just very long but um yeah i cannot tell travis and justin apart all the time it the thing is when they're like speaking full presenter style like it's pretty obvious because they're enunciating but it's like when they start to relax their voice and like not uh, put as much like oomph into it they sound so close Travis is very slightly more nasal but like there's some times where I'm like listening and I'm like oh that's that's Justin and then after a few seconds I realize like no no Justin start just started talking that was Travis how did I how did I do th <sighs> and I say that's surprising because for me um, as a voice actor, like I've studied so many people, and when when I listen to someone for more than like a f more than like an hour, I can I can definitely like tell, like I can tell their their voice pretty much anywhere. Like any all of my favorite voice actors, like no matter what role they're in, like I can tell. No matter no matter how like distinct it is. I can like immediately tell like oh yeah that's that's such and such um doing that voice and um like it's not that hard because especially like as you study voice acting more and start learning the different tricks and things that you can do um you start to you start to realize not only like what the specific people sound like but also what what you can do to achieve certain sounds. So once you do that, you can start recognizing um, what it is that they are doing to get the sound that they're making. And once you recognize that, like, you can pretty much always pick out the actors that you know. It's a, it's a ton of work and study, but, like, so is everything. Study and practice. Years of it.
Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange said that. So did I just now. Glad I need to like cut that clip out. Cause I I um forgot that forgot about that quote in Doctor Strange, which I uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the Doctor Strange movie when it came out. I'm a fan of the comics. Like I love the character from the comics. I I was not a fan of the movie. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch was frustrating. And like uh, he was too much like if if Tony Stark was uh, an unlikable asshole cuz Tony Stark is an asshole. But he's a really likable asshole when he's written well. When he's written poorly, he's just kind of an asshole. But uh, Doctor Strange in his movie was, like, so unlikable, I felt. And it was frustrating. But uh, it's grown on me because as since seeing Infinity War and a little bit of Endgame, that, the little bit that he's in... Um, Doctor Strange is so much better in those that it makes me like the character overall a lot more. But the thing is, like, he's a totally different character in Infinity War. Like, he's so much more, like, stoic. And, like, he's still kind of funny, but he's, like, deadpan. He's not so much, like, a snarky jerk. So, like, I don't know. He He just is, like, the big mystical force that he he is in the comics which i i like that a lot more he's a lot more entertaining um the thing i really loved about infinity war like overall like it's shocking how well that movie works like the fact that it's the pretty much one of the only decent marvel villains like in the mcu like the they might have been better in the comics, but most of the MCU versions of villains are just incredibly bland. But, like, Thanos worked so well the way they did him. Because Infinity War just ended up being a character study of Thanos. Um, but... It's surprising that, like, they're able to have so many characters... And it's not hard to follow, and it's actually pretty decently pacey. Like, the pace is really solid. Um... Uh... So, like, it never feels, like, too slow or too rushed. Everybody gets, like, a good moment. And, in fact, the thing I like is that Almost everybody gets, like, a really good big moment. Like, Doctor Strange gets the awesome moment where he's just, like, turning into, like, a thousand Doctor Stranges. And he's got, like, the, like, eight arms that come out like Vishnu. And it's, oh, oh, it's so good. That that moment is, like, my favorite part in any Marvel movie because it's just, it's just flexing. They're just fle flexing the fact that they can do it. Um... I think I already have one of these. But like I'm so glad they did. Cause it's it's so enjoyable and entertaining. And I know I'm a total mark for um for Marvel in general. But like especially like that 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 stuff. Uh, or like when Thor like just comes crashing down into lightning. Oh, Ooh, it's nice. Overall, like the whole, the whole situation. That, that movie was good. That movie was pretty fun. It's still a Marvel movie, Marvel movie. So it still has a lot of the same problems that they all do. But you know what? I liked it. I liked it a lot. Man, this one, this Animal Crossing is ending up being just kind of rampant. They almost always are, though, because it's pretty much just me going around doing the same menial tasks that you do every time. Um, but you know what? Well, 
What else were you all hoping for? You know? What else was there to say? Blathers, wake up! You can't sleep on stream! Very did the stamp rally, so... No need to do it again. I might do it later. It's fun. Alright. Any new fossils? Darn. Oh yeah, I saw a petition that was, let us let us sell Blathers fossils for his personal collection. And it's like, yeah, I'd like to do that. But alas, they shan't allow it. Oh well. Okay. What's that a reference to? That's, I think that's a Ghostbusters 2016 reference? I haven't seen that movie, but I've watched the Plinker review a few times. I think that's what uh, one of the Kate McKinnon improvs. Which is to say, one of the Kate McKinnon lines, because there are... Like, 95% of that movie is improvised. If you didn't know. Sell a hot item. Eh. Well, let me let me check with the uh, what the hot items are. I might have one. Um. This was just 2016. Just, I'd say just watch the Plinker review of that because you'll pretty much get the whole experience. It's. Uh, it's not great. You know, it is not very good, which sucks, because Ghostbusters is so good. At the same time, though, like, I think the most frustrating thing about Ghostbusters 2016 was the manufactured drama of it. Like, the how antagonistic the filmmakers were... Um, oh, I can make this. Like, specifically, they didn't say anything at first, but, like, when people start getting, being stupid and getting upset about, uh, oh my god, four female Ghostbusters, the feminists are taking over. I'm an adult virgin. <laughs> um, but, uh... Like, once they started doing that, and then the filmmakers responded with such vitriol. I, they did that on purpose. You can't, you cannot convince me that they didn't do that specifically to get some buzz. When in reality, it just comes down to being like a bad remake. Like, it's a, it's a... It's a bad remake of a classic movie with bad modern tropes of comedy. So it's basically just a, a, a middling to bad modern comedy that also happens to be Ghostbusters. And, like, there's some funny parts in there. Like, um... Chris Hemsworth's character is pretty fun. He's, uh... He's a little unbelievably stupid, but... I can... I... I... Uh, I can forgive that. Because, like... Rate your editing. I mean, growing on YouTube has... Growing on YouTube has so little to do with how good the actual content is. So 
so like I doubt it has anything to do with your editing. In reality, if your content is even passable, which generally most is going to be, um, it just comes down to luck. You have to hope that the SEO is in your favor. Crap, I need an iron nugget. Um, you just have to like do the best with the SEO that you can and hope that it, it gets in your favor so that you can get a boost. Like on, on YouTube, all the stuff that I like care about that I put like a good amount of work into and then I'm really proud of the work I've done um, gets like less than a hundred views but then uh, the like whoops I did not mean to do that um, uh, but then the Um, the, the, like, minute-long, like, one to three minute-long tutorials I do for whatever random thing of, like, how to add Twitch chat to your OBS, or, like, um, the biggest one I have, it's got, like, 15,000 views, is, uh, a, uh, it's a tutorial that's like 50 seconds long, and it's just like how to import music samples into FL Studio uh, on a Mac, which was like stupid hard to find like how to do it. But once I figured it out, I was like, this is idiotically easy. Like, this does not need to be this complicated in all these tutorials. They have you, like, doing, like, weird, like, folder coding and stuff. And, like, that's the thing. It's, like, it's, like, 50 seconds. It's, like, it's got that many views, but, like, it, it doesn't leak over. Like, that one really high view video nobody watches goes from that and watches my other stuff, which would be the, the, the helpful thing. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say the likelihood is not that your editing is bad, but that the actual content of the footage is bad. Having not seen it, keep in mind, this is complete conjecture, because I don't know. Unfortunately, hyperlinks are, uh, are, uh, uh, what's the word? Blocked. So, unfortunately, any link you put is not going to show up. Um. But yeah, I'm going to say, like, it's very unlikely that it's your editing, because I can tell you some super successful people have some really garbage editing. And, uh, the high likelihood is just that, um... The, act the actual footage is not good to begin with. So, I would suggest improving that. But yeah, uh, I don't have any way to allow links in my, in my Twitch here. Um, I guess if you... I think if you go to my Twitter, which is in a panel underneath uh, the stream on the browser version, um, if you go to my Twitter, I think my DMs are open there, so I guess if you link it there, I'll give it a watch, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to promise to be like kind. I, I will be constructive, I will definitely give you tips to make it better, but uh... If it's bad, I will I will be very clear about that. Yeah. Um I would say uh I'm not going to like be able to watch it on stream here the way I have things set up. You should probably just DM it to me on Twitter anyway so that I can actually respond to it. Because, like, once, 
I'm not gonna be able to watch it until the stream is over, and then I won't, I won't be able to like tell you how it is. So go, go and DM that to me on Twitter, and I will, I will let you know. Oh, ha! Nice try. See, this is why I don't allow links. It's because boosters like you. I'll tell you now, if you're still doing Rickrolls in 2020, and you're also trying to do comedy content, uh, I'd, I'd say improve your sense of humor. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm being facetious. I'm not saying that you're not funny. I don't know you, but I'll tell you now, Rickrolls have stopped being funny for a good, uh, good decade at least, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly kidding. I'm sure your content is fine. It's, it is incredibly difficult to be able to, um, make it doing any kind of online content. Like... I mean, shoot, you're like my only viewer on here right now. Oh, okay. So yeah, the whole thing... Mm. That was a long... That was a long haul. You like really tried to sell that. I was honestly starting to feel for you, man. I was like... I was... I was honestly like really wanting to help out, but... Okay. <sighs> yep. Your problem with this, see, it w it was a solid bluff. I would have like probably gone for it if I was set up for it, but your mistake was that I am playing from console, so I'm not even set up to watch a video on on my setup. So even if I watched it, nobody on stream would be able to tell what it was. And like I d I don't have like I don't mess around with anything on browser on my streaming computer while I'm streaming because it just can't handle it. So it wasn't, it, it was a good try. You definitely did your best, but uh, I was four steps ahead of you there in this game of 3D chess. So with that, uh, I am going to, I'm going to call this a day. Hour 13. Wow, I was able to get thing through things pretty fast. I felt like I was, like, really dawdling, but I guess I was able to get through it a lot uh, more efficiently than usual. Um, so, yeah. Thank you to anyone watching. Thank you to anyone watching in the future on the past broadcasts or on the uh, archive channel on YouTube, which you'll find a link to that and my personal YouTube in a panel below uh, the stream on the browser version. And, yeah, you'll see my schedule, which shows all of my um, all of my upcoming streams. Come back and check those out when they happen. Times are subject to change. You know, my schedule might futz around, but that's the tentative schedule for the most part. Um, <clears throat> and follow my, my Twitter and such, which is also down there you can see some of the the retweets and stuff i don't really tweet myself super often but i do uh retweet some fun stuff sometimes and yeah i'm, I'm gonna be streaming more i'm working on my youtube show Iggy kids whiteboard games season two that should be coming up uh probably end of the summer beginning of fall i'm not sure depends on how much work ends up being i'm like changing up my workflow and approach quite a bit so uh Maybe it'll be faster, maybe it'll be slower, who knows. I'm getting it all done. Uh, last time I did it, like, basically did, like, two or three, and then, like, to give myself, like, a, a week or so buffer, because I originally was planning on just doing it weekly, um, ad infinitum, but then after doing the Fallout one, I was so, so burnt out that I had to, like, take a break. But, yeah, I'm gonna do all, all 12 episodes written... Written film, written storyboard, filmed, edited, uploaded all at once, and just have them releasing once a week. Um, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll have that coming up, 
and I'll have more streams coming up. So thank you to all that. Thank you to uh Hi, welcome to DPRK. Thank you for uh making it a little more entertaining. It's always good to have someone to interact off of. You uh you tried your best. And honestly, you you almost succeeded, but thankfully my uh, lack of of technological prowess to be able to open a YouTube while also streaming saved me on that one. Safe from being rickrolled another day. All right, all right, that's it. I'm 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 rambling quite a bit. Thank you, thank you. Good night, good night, goodbye.